So I'm now in Stoke-on-Trent. I am just outside the Strength Asylum gym where I'm about to go inside and meet a professional trainer and strongman, Luke Fulbrook. Now, I have never been to Strength Asylum before, but it's supposed to be a legendary gym, especially for bodybuilding and strongman. So I'm really excited to go inside and check it out. Deadlifts you doing now? Yeah. These are warm up weights. As yeah, I understand yeah. It. So how much are you lifting right now? Um, just 180 at the men. Um, today's today's like a like a rep week. So I'm only going to go up to 245 today, and I'll do four sets of six at that weight today on deadlift. So like I say, it's a rep week. Then we'll do like a speed week. Then I'll do a heavy week, and then I'll do a deload week. And it's pretty much that kind of um, rotation for. For, for everything really. Right. So, but yeah, t today's um, rep week really for sets. So 180 is lightweight? Yeah, yeah, warm up weights these are. Yeah. So, bearing in mind the kind of weights that you're lifting yeah. and the kind of movements you have to do, yeah. how do you avoid injury? Um, well, I've been, anybody who knows my like, journey, strongman journey, it's been plagued with injuries. I've detached both biceps, um, detached my doctor. Numerous hamstring tears, um, tore a ligament in me in my lumbar, um, loads and loads of like injuries all the way through. Um, and I met a bloke called Chris Peel, who's a friend now, um, and he he's like a mobility kind of coach. Um, and so I do lots of stuff now in terms of like mobility and stretching and, and everything else, and that and that definitely helps. So anybody who's getting into it or starting along the journey i definitely recommend to be doing all that kind of stuff without a shadow of that you're such a prick <laughs> 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 so, it's because no one cares about your life uh, listen, this beard is very significant, sorry. Sorry, mate. Borrow that? <laughs> yeah, should we get you a fake one? <laughs> Can I borrow that fake camera you've got there for it? Get a little, yeah. one of them toy ones. Them little yeah. toy. I can have the biggest five kilo I know you are. They're like, look like hover tyres. Looks like 25 <laughs> kilos a size on. What's your name, Thor? Oh. <laughs> I have no comeback. I actually don't. They're very large plates for a very large man. So, banter then, that's a typical thing, is it, in the uh, Strength Asylum? Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's, um, we've always, um, like when Ed was training for the Worlds and the record deadlift, it's really, really important to, to have that because otherwise it's just really fucking intense. It's a case of, you know, you're living, eating and breathing it and you spend the majority of your time in the gym, you genuinely do. Our sessions would be anywhere up to like four hours long, so it's, it's important to have that, but then it's also important to be able to, to switch it on when you need it. Um, but yeah, it's good, banter's good, keeps you nice and grounded, and it just makes it fun, otherwise it'd be boring, it'd be hard work. So. Yeah. yeah, it's no different to a playground or a building yard, I suppose. <laughs> So in between sets, it's all fun and games, but then it's serious when it comes to Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, without a shadow of that. You have, um, you have more outfits than, like uh, fucking Lady Gaga at the BAFTAs or something, or, or wherever she goes, MTV Awards, whatever it is. I'm old, so I don't do references very well for young people. But um, yeah, right, we've got, it's like cosplay, man, you've got, um, You've got elbow sleeves, um, knee sleeves, uh, pre-workouts, chalks, belts, um, hydration formulas, electrolytes, balls to roll on, smelling salts, painkillers, just pretty much, um, pretty much everything really. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I have a sponsor for my lifting kit, which is Cerberus. Uh, and I have a sponsor for my supplements, which is Team Affinity. Um, so I'm very, very fortunate in, 
in uh, in that respect because um, they are very good um, and yeah but and then I've got about three different pairs of shoes ollie shoes running shoes squatting shoes it's it's, it's pretty full on yeah so you're saying this is your first working set yeah basically first working set now for like I say this week's week is a rep week um, 245 working weight this week um, try and even though it's a sub maximal weight still try to treat it and approach it like it's a max lift and um, the same as to do with everything whether it's a log or a squat or whatever you have to approach it like it's a max all the time um, just to drill in that mental attitude for it but also if you attack it like it's 400 kilos and it's only 245 in effect it should you know it should fly up so yeah that's the that's the theory behind it and i've noticed you just put some headphones in for this particular lift. yeah yeah when i when i start to get in the zone um I, was, I, I tend to put tend to put music on on a comp day. I'll I'll have my headphones on and I'll just sit in a corner and just take myself away. And what's like, the music? Um, oh, it's a mixture of stuff really. I, mean, I think it's um, angry music, is it? Or? Yeah, a bit of Backstreet Boys, <laughs> NSYNC. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, yeah, it's rock, it's rap, it's it's all the all the it's dependent on mood really. Deadlift normally requires um, a bit of rock music to be fair. So. Um, how much rest do you typically have then between um, sets? It depends really, because um, it's not really maximal weight, it won't be long, but it'll still be about five minutes, um, three to five minutes, just go by feel really. Um, but yeah, I've got a little bit of a, a cold like everybody has at this time of year, so the breathing's a little bit laboured. Um, but yeah, anywhere up to five minutes, I mean, when you're going for heavy singles and doubles, take anywhere between like 10 to 15 minutes between sets. So yeah, it's quite, um, quite a lot of rest required when you're training for strength. So you're saying you just lost 12 kilos yep. in weight. Uh, and you lost the 12 kilos because it was mainly fat, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, how does weight help you in strongman? The only time, it's one of the, it's one of the things that I'm a, I'm a big advocate of, because I'm a strength coach and, and, a, and I help people with the nutrition, um, is if you can't flex it, it doesn't do anything, okay? It, weight, just weight on itself, whether it's fat or muscle, will help in things like the squat, and it will help with events like truck pulls and things like that. But it's not going to help in a the deadlift. There are, there's, um, you've got, you've got Rhiannon Lovelace, under 63 kilo woman, um, lifting four times body weight. You've got um, 105s men lifting 400 kilos. So again, almost four times body weight. So being fat doesn't make you strong, but it's one of the things with strong man, um, and strong women is people people use it and this is no offense this isn't meant to cause um, be um, judgmental or anything like that but they do use it as a way to justify their eating habits so you will tend to find you, you know oh, I'll, put, I'll, I'll, I'll put two kilos on this week so yeah I'm getting there the bulk's going well well it's not really going to be anything at, at most it's going to be a bit of glycogen and the rest is just going to be water and shit so it's yeah, it's um, it's one of the things that I'm quite um, quite like passionate about really when it comes to clients and things um, is that you don't have to be heavy to be strong at all. And I noticed that uh, strong men like Terry Holland, for example, lost a lot yep. of weight yep, yep. and transformed their physique yep. almost completely. But what about movements like, for example, um, the log press? Yeah, where you might use um, your stomach as like a shelf. Oh yeah, a power shelf. Yeah, again, again. A power shelf in things like the axle and the log, definitely, but it doesn't help you press more. No. It might make the clean easier, which means you've got a little bit more energy when you get to the top, but it doesn't make your shoulders any stronger. So it's all well and good getting it to your chest, but if you can't put it over it, what's the point? I've just noticed on uh, the bars here, there is um, a padlock. Yeah. <laughs> What's the padlock all about? Um, we've got, they're, they're very, again, we're really fortunate with the gym. And Andy, the owner, he does invest in a lot of kit 
Um, and these are quite specialised bars, these are really eco ones for the ollie lifters and crossfitters. Um, we've got um, Texas deadlift bars and they're really quite expensive, like, you know, £500 a throw kind of thing. So we just lock them away or he locks them away and you can go and ask for the key, but for example, if you're doing pin presses out of the rack or fucking barbell rows or something like that, and you're gonna use a 500 pound bar and just slam it down, <laughs> then that's why they get locked away really. Got but, it, yeah. got it. So, um, you're just talking about how much investment has been in this uh, gym, Strength yeah. Asylum. Is this one of the best gyms for frontman training? This is one of the best gyms full stop for anything, whether you're a bodybuilder, CrossFit, uh, strongman, anything at all. The atmosphere is really nice. Everybody, the staff, the people who train here are really friendly. People like, think it's a little bit intimidating because there's quite a few big guys, but they're not at all. They're really, they're really genuine. And if you know, if you ask for help, um, they'll help you. There's a lot of females that train here as well. Um, you know, there's professional bodybuilders. I mean, you've got Ed, world's strongest man. Myself, who competes. You've got other people who compete at various levels in physique, bodybuilding, fitness, and so yeah. It's, I, I would say. I would say one of the best gyms in the country, yeah, definitely. So, out of curiosity, how long does an average workout take? <sighs> um, it depends. Today's quite long um, because it's deadlifts, squats, and a couple of moving events. But anywhere from um, two to maybe three and a half hours. Wow. Uh, but again, I mean, that's not constantly bum, 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 bum. There's a lot of rest involved in that. And because it's strong, man, there's a lot of getting kit out, setting kit up, putting kit away. So yeah, don't get me wrong. It's not all <laughs> constantly go, go, go. But yeah, about that kind of time frame. Yeah. Do you have uh, any kind of regular training partners um, or do you just have the occasional training session because your training plans are different yeah. or how does it work? Um, I train on my own mainly, yeah. yeah, since it's really, really hard and this again isn't being egotistical or anything like that um, because there are hundreds of people a lot stronger than me out there. Um, but it's really hard to find people who are as dedicated and who will push as hard and who've got the same kind of focus that I have and that's why myself and Ed gravitated towards each other. Ed had gone through numerous training partners, they'd stay with him for a couple of months and then they'd either injure themselves or they just couldn't keep up the pace um, or they were just doing it really as, as a hobby and, and Ed wasn't. So that's why we gravitated towards each other and I mean we trained together for seven years. Um, so we spent more time together than he did with his wife and I did with my wife at the time and things like that. So it's, um, no, it's really, really tough um, to find somebody who, um, who's, uh, who's as motivated. But I prefer to train as well with somebody who's a lot stronger than me. So for example, the Ed's deadlift ladder video, everybody's seen it, everybody's like thinking, I think he went up to 400 kilos. I did it, I went up to 340 and back down, which is good. But you do that and then Ed comes along and does like 400. So, for example, squatting, I'd do three reps on 300 and think, yeah, brilliant. And then Ed would come along 360 and do six reps. So it's a good way of like keeping you grounded and keeping you, keeping you real, I suppose, if you want to, if you want to, like, for, for want of a better phrase. Definitely. And you mentioned that um, you trained with Ed for kind of seven years. Yeah, yeah. How long have you actually been training strongman for? 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. Right. And if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Uh, 41. 41, yeah. okay. Is that quite a late age to start? Um, yeah, it is really. I mean, I've always gone to the gym and I've always been interested in the gym. And I've always loved strongman. I've always wanted to be the strongest in the gym. I've never been bothered about being the biggest or the most in shape, but I've always wanted to be the guy who pushes the most or deadlifts the most. Um, so, about, like I say, about 10, 11 years ago, um, there was a few lads at the gym I was a member at, and they were doing strongman and they invited me along, and that was it. It started from there. It's one of the things, really, that I tried to get over to my clients and over to people who are starting is you can't rush strength. It's not romantic and it's not pretty, but it takes three to five days a week for 10 years to get strong. Um, and it is consistency that, that does that. It, I mean, you've got to have a formulated plan and you've got to be, you know, structured, but it takes time. You can't, you can't rush strength at all. Do you have any uh, particular like benchmarks or goals that you're aiming for in it while training for a competition? Yeah, um, this year um, I want to pull 400 deadlift 
and I want to push a 200 kilo log. Um, all time best on dead is 375. Um, all time best on log is 186. So um, I'm hoping to do that this year. And then there's a competition called um, Static Monsters. And that's just two lifts, which is an 18 inch axle deadlift. Um, and the world record on that is 450 from Master. Um, so I'm looking at um, beating that. And then the record for the Master in the log is 172.6. And then obviously the combined total world record as well. So I'm looking at getting all three of those to be fair. Awesome. And then I'm gonna go for the 501 kilo deadlift as well. <laughs> Because <laughs> everybody seems to be doing it. <laughs> or trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just, why don't you just create your own special like 50 foot long bar? Yep. Put the weights right at the end so they break the four by a millimetre. Okay. And pull 501 because that's what everyone else seems to be doing right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a go at that. <laughs> mm. So the cardio that I do is like events based. So it's just one day, um, I'll do 30 minutes um, and it'll be at the minute, it's a, it's a big like circuit. Bear walk for 30 meters, um, into farmer's walk for 30 meters, into tire flip for 30 meters, um, into prowler push for 30 meters. Then rest a minute and do that like five times then rest five minutes um, and then I'll do like a crossfit thing so I, I can't remember what, the, what it's called but it'll be six deadlift six power cleans six presses and six squats with the same weight whatever crossfit thing that is right. um, and I do that and that's really helped with the fitness but it's causing a bit of lower back issues the next day and then like today it's like a bit pumped um, but I do a lot of um, dog like I will go walking my dog so I'll do like I'll try and do like two miles a day every day so Nice steady state stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a combination of neat and high intensity intervals, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're just talking about weight. Yeah. And when you were 142 kilos, yeah. you competed in the world. Yeah. And it was an uncomfortable weight to be. Yeah, it's like I say, when when I seem to get to 140 kilos, my body's like, no, fuck off, this is too much. So you take three or four steps back at pump. Um, you sat on the plane, you don't fit on the plane properly. Um, you don't sit in chairs properly, cars are uncomfortable, just just absolutely everything. I mean, when Ed was like um, 190 kilos, it was how he functioned, I really don't know, because at 140, it's hard work. I mean, you're talking as graphic as this is, wiping your own arse is a struggle, getting in and out of the bath is a struggle. It's, it's hard work, I mean, I'm only five foot ten and a half on a good day, five foot ten on a, on a normal day, so, it's um, at that kind of height and that kind of weight, it's, it, it, it's, um, it is pretty tough. So I mean the lads out there who are 170 and 180 and those kind of things and they're six foot four with it, it's like fucking hell man, it must be, um, must be yeah, just, just, just e e everyday things. It's, it's one of the things I had a rant quite a while ago is that constantly body weight's brought into play and it's like, oh yeah, but you weigh this much and body to weight ratio, weight and everything else. So it's like, hold on a minute dickhead. I don't walk in a gym and put that weight on. I have to fucking live with that in the real world. So I have to walk around at 142 kilos. I don't just wear a 142 kilo suit when I come into the gym. You have to live with it and walk with it. So it's it's, it's tough, it's hard work, man. It's like clothes and everything as well. Oh, clothes are nightmare. I literally, even now, um, at 128 kilos, even now, I live in joggers and t-shirts, that's it. That's that, that's literally it. And then in summer, it's shorts and shorts and vests because it's just, it's impossible because I'm sh short, not overly tall. Um, they think because you're wired at the top, then you've got a great big massive gut. And if you've got big thighs, they think you've got a massive gut as well. So everything's all like a tent out here. So it's, it's tough work, man. It's hard, but yeah. yeah. This is where the toys are kept in the back. Yeah, where's some of them are, yeah. How much does the, fr does the uh, frame weigh? Um, 85. 85? You've got to struggle to uh, lift the frame by itself. Um, you talked about like very serious injuries that you've had yep. and recovery from them. Yeah. But I'm guessing you get a lot of like tendonitis and these kind of things yep. as well. And just like aches and pains. Yeah. How do you deal with those with training? It's um. Magnus, um, the Magnuson said 
once that if he ever woke up and he wasn't sore, they think he was dead. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much what a strongman is. It's just waking up and, and, and being sore. But again, if you do your mobilization, you stretch, and you have a decent, really good recovery protocol in place, and you get plenty of quality sleep, then you can limit that. But yeah, you just you, you are sore a lot of the time, yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you have saunas. Do you yeah. ever utilize a like, ice bath and things? Yeah, basically, I've got, um, very fortunate, I've got like a, um, a local council run house club that's got a sauna and a spa, so I'll do sauna, plunge pool, sauna, plunge pool. Um, some days I'll just do sauna. Um, so yeah, 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 but I do I do all of that. And you yeah. find that helps a lot? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, um, definitely, yeah. Um, it's um, It definitely reduces soreness. And then there's, you know, there's papers out there and theories that it restricts muscle growth because you're stunting the body's natural response to to the stimulus. But if you want to train again the next day, you've got to do that. Um, so yeah, it, um, it definitely helps. And, and one thing I'd definitely have noticed when I've been injured or, um, or when I've not been training particularly for a competition or at peak is that doing that helps with maintaining muscle mass yeah without a shadow of a doubt because there's nothing you know everything else tapers off the food that you eat and the amount of training that you're doing but you keep that recovery protocol up and you seem to maintain um, your muscle mass so yeah that definitely helps yeah. Back. You've got to just join in at the end. I know, yeah. You were here for the video. Oh, 131. Four. 128.6. It And a plant-based penis. Are you ready? Plant-based plant penis. Plant-based penis. Oh. Yeah, it's still fat. Go on, jumping up and down on this. 174.6 Eat my cheese. That was so wet. It was so, so wet. I've tasted way too much of you today. You're welcome. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> After workouts, actually getting it out of the storeroom. It's not particularly heavy, unloaded. You can load it, but that's 100 kilos now. But because it's machined um, mm -hmm. and it's thick, um, it makes it a lot harder again. So when you come to comp, in theory, it'll be a lot, a lot easier All right. to handle. competing in strongman are there certain events that you expect to win and others that you're hoping you're going to place like maybe stepping up yeah through? um i would always hope in a deadlift um an overhead event um or any kind of test of static strength that i would always be top three if not top two um the events that um aren't my best I normally move in events because um, I'm quite short. Um, I say quite short. I'm still tall, but not compared to the, you know to the people I'm competing James. against are over six foot mainly. Um, so yeah, they're the events that I would um, struggle with. But again, I would hope to not come any lower than the than the um, than the top quarter of the field. Yeah. And I guess there's some events where clean tour might be an advantage. Oh God, yeah, we've got um, a sack toss. So, like I mentioned before, Gary Gardner's like six foot seven. So it's sack toss over four meters. So the guy's with his wingspan, he's already three quarters of the way there. So <laughs> yeah, um, truck pull is another, um, when you're tall, it's advantageous. Stone loading, again, 
um, being tall is um, advantageous. Uh, yeah. Are there anywhere it's an advantage being a little bit shorter? Um, oh god, um, yeah, pressing, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah, pressing and, and deadlifting, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. So if there's any potential strong men out there that are thinking about getting started, yep. what would be kind of a key piece of advice that you'd give them? Um, I suppose the, the, the main piece of advice, especially with the day and age we live in and social media and we're connected and can see everything that everybody's doing, is just focus on yourself and focus on your training, it doesn't matter what Joe Bloggs is doing or John Doe is doing, focus on you. And so long as you're consistent with your training, so long as you do the best you can each session, you're not, sometimes you're gonna have bad sessions, everybody does. Sometimes you'll have amazing sessions, but the key to it is consistency. Just focus on you, focus on, on your path, and just be consistent with your food, with your training, with your recovery, with your mobility, and don't worry about what anybody else is doing, really, that's the main thing.